Rajan, as always, thank you a million times for doing this for us. You've been glad, always glad to be here, Pramod. I'm going to ask you to just introduce yourself briefly, if I may. I know I'll put you in that spot, but just a, a brief run on, on, on yourself would be wonderful. So I'm, uh, I'm currently a, a partner at uh, Sequoia Capital India. Uh, so India is, uh, you know, Sequoia is a Silicon Valley based firm that started 50 years ago. Uh, we've been in India now for, uh, for about 15 years. We have about $7 billion under management. We invest from idea through IPO. Um, I've been at Sequoia for about two and a half years and I lead our seed stage program and our seed stage funds. So we have a program called Search. Uh, which is really a, a so think of it as you could think of it as an accelerator, but we think of it as a, sort of a platform for the best seed stage companies to accelerate their journey. We invest one to two million dollars, and then we work with them for uh, six fifteen weeks, and then we help them with their follow on fundraising and things like that. Uh, prior to this, I was in uh, tech for a long time, so I used to lead Google in India and Southeast Asia for about eight years. Prior to that, I was at Microsoft and Dell. Uh, and then I started my career with McKinsey in the U.S. So that's me in a nutshell. And I've known Pramod for many, many years. Rajan, talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing in the seed and startup world in India. There's a huge explosion of startups happening. Many of them probably don't even get counted, I suspect, at some level. We're number three in the world already at this point in time. We may be number two. Who knows? Um, but... How are you seeing it develop? Just some broad words on that would be wonderful. And then we can dig right into how do we make accelerators work better or which ones are the best ones that you see? I think where we are today is, you know, we see a, a couple of important trends at Seed. Obviously, there's a large number of companies being, uh, being founded. Uh, I think there's, uh, you know, maybe three, 4,000 companies being founded, about 1,000 of them raise at least Seed funding and then uh, several hundred of them raise Series A and, and beyond. Um, uh, so, um, uh, you know, the, the, the few trends are one, um, you know, the founders uh, increasingly are quite seasoned, right? So the best founders, they come from companies like Flipkart, like Freshworks, like Google. Uh, so they've grown up in seeing hy hyperscale. They come with very deep domain expertise. Uh, they come with uh, company building experience, right? So that's one big trend that we see. Um, it's not to say it's it's all three thousand have experience, right? But but the, the best of the best founders uh, tend to tend to have uh, have that. Uh, the second is look the the, um, um, the 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 what we've seen is really a broad basing of uh, of the kind of startups that are being launched, right? So it used to be you know if you go back five six years, it was really all about e-commerce. Uh, then it became all about uh, sort of ride hailing. But today, if you look at it, uh, we are extremely broad based. So. Uh, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, like if you look at our, our search cohorts, they're pretty representative of what's happening in the ecosystem. Uh, so 50% of our uh, cohort, this, 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 this sixth cohort that we're on now, we have 20 companies, is SaaS and developer tools, right? Indian companies building for the world from day zero, uh, could be enterprise software, could be vertical software, could be horizontal mm. software developer mm -hmm. tools. So that's sort of a big, 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 big so B2B software for the world. But then outside of that, you know, in the in 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 domestically focused businesses, it's really pretty broad spread now, right? Uh, so lots and lots of activity in fintech. I'd probably say it's been the most active uh, segment, uh, you, you know, lots of things have happened in edtech. They continue to happen. Digital health is still pretty early space. Actually, agtech, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, promote three years ago, we made our first agtech investment, agricultural uh, technology, and now we have about seven or eight uh, agtech companies. Uh, so we think agtech is going to have tremendous potential given the uh, given the massive sort of uh, economies we have. And then next generation e-commerce, gaming, direct-to-consumer brands. Uh, so promote, we had one of our companies, which is a direct-to-consumer beauty, uh, beauty brand uh, that went from zero to 100 crores of revenue with 30% pat in nine months, right? My so, God. Yeah, I mean, it's My just crazy, right? Because what's happening is, you know, in many ways, the, the e-commerce highways have been built by Flipkart and Amazon and Nike. So now if you're launching a new brand, if you've got a very differentiated product, and you understand digital marketing and you can scale your backend manufacturing, you know, very quickly, you know, you can. So this company is actually going to get to 300 crores within 25 months of launch. And the third theme is, I'd say, look, um, there's a fair bit of capital in core sectors now, right? So, uh, you know, if you're a SaaS entrepreneur or you're building a developer tool company or let's say you're building a D2C brand, I would say in the core technology and tech enabled sectors, there's a fair bit of capital. So if you want to raise half a million dollars or a million dollars or $2 million dollars, 
Uh, like, let's say you want to raise two, three hundred thousand dollars, right? There are probably 30 or 40 sources that you can go to uh, to raise if you're in what I call a core sector. Now, on the other hand, so that's sort of the third thing. Now, that being said, there's a massive shortage of capital uh, in sectors like, uh, let's say, electric, you know, like if you're trying to build hardware, you know, Mission Impossible. If you're trying to build a life sciences company, sort of very, very difficult, right? If you're trying to build something in clean tech, uh, or in climate tech, that's capital intensive. So that there is that shortage. But but in general, look, it's, it's exploded. What do you see are some of the key success factors for some of the accelerators that you might run into or some of the states and the things some of the states may be doing. Well, Pramod, I don't spend a lot of time with the public sure. uh, That's uh, right. public, public incubators, accelerators. <clears throat> uh, but, you know, if I look at successful incubators, let's just call them, you know, number one, they're, they're run by people who understand uh, both how to invest and build companies, right? Because it's very, very important to have practitioners running these incubators and accelerators, right? So, so one one of the things I worry about with a lot of incubators and accelerators in India is, you know, they're not run by, uh, you know, folks who either know how to pick uh, because you have to pick good companies to work with, or people who know how to mentor them. So that's one. I think second, it's it's very important in the early days to have a focus. Uh, so, you know, like there are, you know, there's a SaaS accelerator called Upeka in Bangalore. It's a private sector. They're very, very good at SaaS, right? So they're deep domain expertise. They know exactly what to do with SaaS companies, what not to do, what not to do. They've got a set of mentors who are very, very good. So I think focus usually helps. Now, obviously, somebody like Surge, uh, you know, given the Sequoia heritage, right, we can be pretty broad based and do many things. Uh, but if you're, if you're starting up, I think that's very, very important. I think the third thing is, look, you have to, um, you, you know, you, you have to be able to, uh, uh, have winners, right? So at the end of the day, if you're an accelerator, you've been around uh, for five, six, seven years, and you can't really point to even a hand, you know, one company uh, that came out of there that actually broke out, right? And I don't mean become a unicorn or whatever the hell it is, but like they broke out, they've got significant revenue, they've got, you know, ideally it's, you know, got profitability, if not, uh, you know, raise, you know, they, they've, they've got sort of a market 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 leadership or you know they're an emerging market leader position so i think i think those are the things that are important but i would say the most important thing uh, it's like any, everything else uh, promote whether it's a big company whether it's a startup whether it's government it's all about people and it starts with who's running it what is it that you're going to offer as an incubator that's really going to help change the trajectory of a, of a startup and i think that's something to think uh, deeply about as part of surge how do you guys help companies scale? What do you do? How do you intervene? How often do you intervene? Do you have a playbook for that in terms of how you might run an accelerator, for instance, or how do you run the interventions that these companies would require? So firstly, it's capital, right? So we invest one to $2 million in each company, the average is about 1.5 million. But we are also open architecture promote, right? So we have other funds, you know, venture funds, seed funds, angels, <laughs> micro funds, whatever, co-investing with us. So 80% of our companies have co-investors when we invest. So, so we would invest about a million and a half, but the average round, surge round that companies raise is actually higher than that, right? So, uh, uh, so it's, you know, call it two and a half million dollars, something like that. And that's, that's important because that gives a startup enough capital to do the hiring, to spend the time, to not worry about fundraising. Now, that's not to say, look, every incubator can't invest two and a half million dollars per company. Company, right uh, that's why i said it's, it's not it's somewhere between like 50 lakhs and you know 2.5 million uh, dollars right so that's one part right the second thing is we we have a 16 week program uh, mohit where we have taken the process of building a company at the early stages and broken it down into modules okay uh, so the you know like for instance yesterday is our, tomorrow is our session on building a culture uh, because you know you know you have to build culture from day zero otherwise companies don't scale okay next week is about getting to pmf so we have a whole day for so basically we run it we used to run this offline but now obviously with covid run it virtually and we like virtual actually so basically one day a week so for 16 weeks is the program one day a week we have a, a specific topic right um, um uh, and and then we spend six hours uh, you know, we have about two hours of think of it as a masterclass. Then we have a studio where the founders talk about themselves. Then we get a, you know, sort of a unicorn founder. So last week, uh, last week we had, uh, uh, we had the, uh, you know, actually two, two weeks ago, we had the uh, Razor Pay founders uh, come and uh, uh, speak to us, right? So tomorrow we have the Misho founder coming. Uh, so so that's, sort of, that's sort of how we do it, where we go very deep. And then as part of that, we give them assignments. Okay, so last week we talked about metrics that matter, building OKRs. The assignment for this week is, Go build your MIS, and we have analysts who work with them. Our, you know, our young team members who work with them to help them build their MISs, right? So they have to build their OKRs. Once they build their OKRs, there are twenty companies. Every single one of one of them will have a one-hour office hours with me, where I will review the OKRs and I'll give them feedback. We have a big team, by the way, right? So, 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 so essentially, think of it as we take all the important aspects of of company building, we break it down, and so essentially, we have a lot of content. Uh, 
all right, that we deliver. It's delivered by a combination of Sequoia partners and, and, and seasoned founders and practitioners, right? So for instance, our product session, which is next week, how to get DMM, how to build great products that users love, et cetera, is actually run by, you know, some of the best product managers in the country, right? The buy yes. product and so on and so forth. So, so that's sort of part two. The third part is we have some capabilities, right? So we have, we have a full-time recruiting team uh, a promote that actually works uh, helps our companies recruit because recruiting is a big Very issue. Good. Uh, we have uh, we have a we have a, a tech team, so we have former CTOs who are now with with Surge and Square. We have Ajay Gore, who was a former CTO of Gojack, which is going to go public at twenty thirty billion dollars. He's an operating partner with us. So so what these guys do is so if your if your need so if for every company we sort of say what are the two or three things they need to do. Uh, sorry, that's my dog. If you can hear it, but um, <laughs> um, um, what what are the two or three things they need to do? to be able to really move the trajectory, right? For some, for most, for everybody, hiring is a big issue. For those that have found PMF that are scaling, actually their tech starts breaking. So Ajay gets involved, helps them re-architect their tech, you know, and so on and so forth. So that's, and then finally, what we do uh, promote is we help them raise their next round of financing, okay? So yeah. so whenever they're ready, so so we run these two cohorts a year. After the cohort ends, about a month, late, month after the cohort ends, we run something called Upsearch. The top 50 Series A investors <coughs> on the planet show up for this. They have one-on-one -on -one meetings with each company, right? So, um, uh, uh, and and so each company will meet 15 to 25 uh, investors. Uh, companies tell us who they want to meet. Investors tell us who they want to meet. We set up these Zoom calls, and then and then you know. And what that does is, and and by the way, the startups can come to it whenever they want. About half the cohort will attend the upsurge after surge ends, but actually the rest of them, because you know, two million dollars is a lot of money. You know, some of them can go yes. build for two years, right? Uh, uh, and I'm hoping we'll actually have a company that never raises capital after that. That would be awesome. A very capital efficient. I hope it does happen. So, so, so that that then helps them raise their next round of financing because we have an open architecture model promote, right? So Sequoia, you know, we have a seed fund, we have venture funds, we have growth funds, but our search companies are open to the world. So we announce the whole cohort to the world on day zero. So a lot of our companies, actually, uh, seventy percent of our companies raise Series A. That's the data over the last you know several cohorts we've had. But of the companies that raise Series A promote. Sequoia Venture only invests in a very small minority of them. Most right. of us is actually led by other funds, right? Because this model only works when you have open architecture. So that's the last thing. The last thing we do is we, we help them uh, very, very proactively raise their raise their next round. So that mm. it's a long answer to your question, but those are all the things that we that we do. We have a full time team of about thirty people, including me, promote uh, doing this. We have uh, you know our last fund was many hundred millions of dollars that are you know, focused on uh, investing in the seed stage companies. Yes. Rajan, I'm conscious of your time. You've been brilliant as always. One of the joys of uh, talking to Rajan, as I hope everyone sees here, is that he energizes not himself, not just himself, but he energizes all of us uh, every time. And so I always love talking to him because he's, he's, a, he's, a, uh, you know, he's a power onto himself. He's a force of nature. And uh, Rajan, thank you uh, for this. We'll if you'll allow us, we'll come back to you from time to time. But, you know, you can, you're such a powerful force for all of us to think about as we go forward on our mission. No, thank no, you very much. More than, uh, thank you for having me and uh, congratulations to everyone. Hey, guys, we are, we are very keen to invest in a, our first surge company from Punjab, from the state of Punjab. So uh, we will keep waiting. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.